Hi, I'm Steve, and welcome to this video. Today, I'm going to show you how to perform real time stream processing with Snowplow data. I'll also show you how to extract data from some custom Snowplow schemas. Before I continue, I'll assume you've got Snowplow up and running on AWS and that you've got access to read from the enriched stream. If you want to know more about how I set up my Snowplow deployment and how I created my custom schemas, please give me a shout on the stream. The link to that is in the description below. To follow along with this tutorial, you'll need to have some things set up. It'll be handy to have a custom schema or two set up because I'll be showing you how to extract and transform the data. You'll need events arriving in Snowplow or be able to generate events as needed. I've created a small test page for this. Basically, it can send page view events. It can generate mouse movement events, either by moving the mouse around in this box or I can turn on a random mouse movement generator. And I can also track mouse click events. And as you can see, this web page is running locally and it's hosted using live server in Visual Studio Code. The code for my web page was built with snippets from the Snowplow documentation. So you can basically see here that I'm sending self describing events and I'm using schemas that I predefined earlier, such as this mouse move event and mouse click event. The mouse click event will send a JSON string with button as the property name and whichever button number is clicked. The mouse move event will send position X and position Y with obviously the X and Y coordinates of the mouse. I created my custom schemas using post requests to the Igloo server and I made all my post requests from Postman. It's a really convenient way to kind of group all of your requests for a given project or platform. So I've got all my Snowplow requests here for creating schemas, getting my schemas, deleting them, checking the server, all that sort of thing, all grouped in one place, and I can save them and share them as needed. The last thing you'll need is a Quix account. You can sign up for free, and the link to that is in the description below. So with Snowplow up and running, my custom schemas to hold mouse coordinates and mouse click events, and my custom web page to send events into Snowplow, I can get started. So the first thing to do is stream events in from Snowplow. And to do that, I'll use a data source from the Quix library. So here on the home page, I'll click Add Data Source, and then I'll search for Snowplow. Next, I'll click Set Up and Deploy. And now I need to enter some details about the AWS environment where my Snowplow installation is located. So with that done, I'll just highlight that we are going to be outputting our data to a topic called Snowplow Data, and we're going to be reading from a stream on AWS called SP Enrich Stream. This stream is part of the Snowplow deployment. There are four Snowplow streams in total. I've gone for the Enrich Stream because that has the most complete data set. Be aware that the other streams may not be compatible with this connector, so stick with the Enrich Stream. So now that we've got all of our settings entered, let's click Deploy. The pre-built code will be deployed and then the service will be started and the topics will be created and opened. So once that's deployed, we're redirected to the home page. So now we can click the tile for the service. We can view the logs and any messages as they arrive. We haven't got any messages coming in at the moment, but as I said earlier, I've got my test web page. So if I bring that up and move my mouse around, we should see some events arriving. And there we go, we've got some mouse movement events and a couple of mouse click events. So let's take a look at them. This one should be a mouse click event. So I think if we scroll right down to the bottom, we can see the event name, which is mouse click event. And a little bit further up, we should see the data for that, which is here. We're sending button and that one happened to be button one. Need to make a note of the parameter name for later on. So I'll take a copy of that and paste it in my notepad on the side. We can also take a look at one of these earlier events, which as it shows here is a mouse move event. We can see the data that we're getting, position X and position Y. And if we scroll down, we can confirm that it is a mouse move event. So again, I'll make a note of the parameter name and store that in my notepad for later. So the next thing I'll do is create a transformation to extract this mouse movement uh, JSON string 
and transform it so that it ends up as numeric parameter data in the stream. So to build this transformation, I'll be using a template from the Quicks library. So let's go to the library. We'll choose transformation from the pipeline stage filter. And then we're going to use this empty template to build our transformation. So I'll preview the code. And as you can see, all it does is print the value of the data frame and then pass the data frame on to the output stream. So our job is to build our transformation. Before I do that, I need to save the template to my workspace. So I'll click edit code and then I'll give it a name. I'll call it snowplow transformation. The input data will be the snowplow data being emitted from the snowplow connector we just deployed. And the output topic will be snowplow transformed. So I'll save that as a project. And now that it's saved to my workspace, I can edit and run the code as many times as I need to make sure that it's ready to deploy as a service. Not only can you develop your code here in the cloud, but you can also clone the repository and work locally. We can start by just running what we've got and making sure we get some data. So I'll click run, and there's no data arriving yet. So I'll go over to my test web page and I'll move my mouse around. As you can see, data is arriving in Quicks, and we can see the timestamp and an event fingerprint, which is one of the columns in the data frame. So we'll make a slight modification to display all of the data. But for now, I'll turn on generate random mouse movement so that we've got events constantly being sent to Snowplow and subsequently streamed into Quicks. So I'll stop this from running, and then I'll change the pandas option to display more of the data. So we're going to display max rows, max columns, a width of 1,000. We're going to center the column headings and have a precision of three. That's kind of like a default set of display options. So again, if we run the code, we can see in the console output, there's a lot more data. If I just stop this, and then we can look a bit more closely at the data, we can see that we're receiving uh, mass move events. And if we scroll up a little bit, we can see the position X and position Y JSON data. So we'll now use the JSON library to convert that string into a JSON object. So we'll import JSON. And the column that we're looking for from the data frame is the mouse move column, which we copied from the output that we were looking at earlier. And then we can print out the JSON object to make sure that it's what we want. So I'll run the code. And as you can see, it's converted that into a JSON object. We've got the position X and position Y being displayed as expected. So I'll stop the code again and get rid of the console. And now we can iterate over that JSON object to add the values to the data frame. And we can do that with a simple for loop. We now just need to add the key and value to the data frame. We can again print out the data frame to make sure that it's been added. So I'll run the code again, and then I'll stop it and have a look for the values. And as you can see, we've got column headers for pos x and pos y, and we've got values of 182 for x and 103 for y in this case. As you know, I set up schemas for mouse movement as well as mouse clicks. So what we'll do is make this code reusable so it can be used to transform both of those schemas. So what we're going to have to do is parameterize the column that we're looking for, as well as handle the fact that it might not be in the data set that's received. So in order to make the column we're looking for configurable, we'll use environment variables. So if I cut the mouse move column name out of here, I can edit the environment variable which will allow us to change which column we're looking for later on. So I'll click Edit, I'll save my changes, and I'll add a column for the schema that we're looking for. The initial value for this one will be the mouse move event, and I'll also add an environment variable for a prefix. This prefix will be used to ensure that the columns we're adding to the outgoing data frame are unique. We'll just call this prefix. And these columns will be prefixed with mouse move.
So next, I want to make use of these new environment variables in the code, and then create properties on my Quix function object to hold them. So there you go, we've got the schema and prefix environment variables read into properties on the function. So we can go ahead and make use of the schema property down here when we're reading from the data frame, like so. And we can make use of the prefix property when we're building the key to add to the data frame. So once again, we can test this code by running it and checking that the output is as expected. So I'll just stop it and take a look at the output. And as you can see, we've got the position parameters prefixed with mouse move. So the last thing to do is to ensure that the column we're looking for is in the source data frame. Otherwise, there'll be an error. So we'll add that check here before we try to access the column in the data frame. Everything goes inside the if statement except for writing to the output stream. We want to write to the output stream regardless of whether we've done the transformation or not, so that the downstream services aren't starved of data. At this point, we probably don't need our display settings, so we'll get rid of those. And I think what we'll do is print out the JSON object if it has found and processed some data. So we'll do that like that. And then we can run it one last time to make sure it still works. And it does still work, so that's great. What we can do now is tag our code with v1, and then we can deploy it as a service. So to get this deployed, I'll just click the deploy button. I'll choose the version tag I created, and I'll make sure to change the deployment type to service. This, as it says here, ensures that it runs indefinitely and obviously restarts if it needs to. The environment variables will be pre-filled from our project. So we've still got the mouse move schema and the mouse move prefix selected. So the last thing to do is to rename the transformation and click deploy. So after that is built, deployed and up and running, we can click on the tile, view the logs and also view the live data to make sure that it's doing what it should. So I'll click on the tile. The logs are showing that it's processing data. And if I click on the messages tab, we can see that data is arriving into the input topic. And if we switch to viewing the output topic, we can see that data is being streamed out of our transformation as well. If I click on one of these rows, I can then scroll down. I can see that we've now got the mouse move values. So our transformation has worked. We've extracted the JSON from the original Snowplow message and we've transformed it into individual parameter data. Next up, we can deploy the same code and use it for the mouse click event. So if we head back to the home page and click on the pipeline view to get a visual representation of our pipeline as it stands at the moment, we can see that we've got Snowplow data being streamed into Quix, and then we have our mouse move transformation. So now what we want to do is add an additional transformation deploying the existing project, but with some different environment variables. First of all, I'll choose our v1 version tag. And then I will change the schema that we're looking for to mouse click. And I'll change the prefix to mouse click. And then again, I'll change the deployment type to service and the transformation name to mouse click. And then I can redeploy this code to process mouse clicks. So now that we've got both our mouse move and mouse click transformations running, we can take a look at the live data to make sure that we're getting both the mouse clicks and the mouse movement. So I can click on the arrow, which takes me to the live data explorer. I'll then go over to my test web page and make sure that we've got some mouse clicks and mouse movement flowing into the platform. So if I select this stream and then enter mouse into the search, I should see my mouse movement and mouse click event. And I'm only seeing mouse movement here at the moment, and there's no mouse clicks. If I go back to the home page, I can explain what's going on. Our Snowplow data source, which is reading from our AWS topic, is generating the data. We deployed the mouse move transformation, which started reading the data. We then deployed the mouse click transformation. Now the trouble is, both of these are using the same consumer group. In order to allow both of these services to read the same data at the same time, 
we'll need to alter how we read from the input top. So we can stop both of these and then go back to our Snowplow transformation project, go to the main Python file and change the line that opens the input topic and ensure that no consumer group is being used, allowing both deployments of this code to read the latest messages. So I'll specify none for the consumer group. Now I'll save the code again, and then I can redeploy both services. So I'll go back to the home page. I'll edit the mouse click service, choose V2, click save and start. And then once the mouse click service is started, I can do the same for the mouse move service. So I'll just change the tag to V2, save and start the service. Now, when I go to check the live data explorer, so if I select the active stream, search for mouse in the parameters, then I can generate some mouse click and mouse movement event. As you can see, as soon as I generated the mouse click event, I got the mouse click parameter here in Quicks. If I select the mouse click and mouse move events in my parameter list, and then generate some more mouse movements and mouse clicks, you can see in Quicks, I've got that data coming in in real time. So as you've seen, I've streamed data from Snowplow on AWS, and I've transformed the JSON data from the custom Snowplow schemas by creating a reusable transformation service. The next steps from here would be to use this data to analyze site visitor behavior or push it to a downstream system or service for further analysis. So I really hope that you found this video useful and that it'll help you with your Snowplow and Quix integrations, or indeed that you just picked up some tips to help you use Quix. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.